Hey, John and Mike here from Brew-Dudes.com. We're following up a video that Mike actually put together a couple of weeks ago. And this is the results of his top mashing experiment. This is a dry stout. And we're just taking sips. We're trying to figure out if top mashing is a good procedure to follow when you're making dark, roasty beers. Um, so what are your initial thoughts on this beer? <laughs> well, my initial thoughts... Um, this is the first dry stout I've ever made, but compared to other stouts that I've made, or even porters, dark beers of this color, yep. for some reason I feel like the roasted character is really smoother okay. than I'm used to. It's, it's, uh, th there's no harsh edges to it, I think. I don't know. It's just, it seems to meld really nicely. You mean with the acrid sort of taste that one would yeah. get if you... Yeah, considering that I actually ground it into like uh, instant coffee, coffee basically. Yeah. Um, powder. It's really, I just find that the bitterness is very... Um, not the bitterness, but the, the, the roastedness is is smooth hmm. and fairly mellow. Um, okay, so the first thing I was tasting for is to figure out if it tasted any different than, you know, I guess a, a stout you would make where the dark grains were with every other grain in the yeah. mash for the whole 60 minutes. Um, I can't tell that, and uh, without having something to compare it to, yeah. I'll, I'll take your word for it that uh, it, that's smoother. Now, you were saying that, because I know that you're on camera and you yeah. had the... The blonde version of yeah. <laughs> of the mash, and then you had the the roasty yeah. dark version of it. And you yeah. said you can actually taste the base, the what you had. Yeah, it's actually the uh, first time in my life I've ever brewed a beer where the components were kind of separated mm -hmm. at, at some point. Right. Usually we just put it all in the mash tun, and you you go through it, um, and you end up with a final product. And unless you really have brewed with a lot of ingredients multiple times in different ways. To say that, oh, that's Crystal 80 I taste, or that's, yeah. or, you know. Yeah. So with this, it's just base malt and uh, flaked barley. Yeah. And I can distinctly remember what that tasted like. Granted, it was unfermented, so it was kind of sweet. But I can pick that up in here pretty strongly. The Maris Otter and the flaked barley. And then I can taste the roast. Yeah. So, but only because I have the palate memory from having the two separately. So I think kind of speaks to the value of, if you really want to get a great recipe together to try to brew it with parts missing. Hmm. Go completely through the process of maybe fermenting it and doing a couple different batches where you're dropping an ingredient out and then tasting it. And you'll understand the better complexity of how, it, how an ingredient really brings it up. Because by itself, the base would have been a sweet little blonde ale with <laughs> flaked barley yeah, with, it, a nice, yeah. with a nice body. So, exactly. um, but the roast obviously is what, is what it's about in this beer. Yep. So. Sure. What, do you, what do you think about like the what are the what flavors of roast are you getting? I mean, I'm getting a lot of dark chocolate to be honest. I mean, I'm getting uh, and you're you're not saying there's any crystal in here at all. No, no. So that's it, huh? Yeah. So I mean, that's that's the essence of dry stout, mm -hmm. right? Is uh, roasted barley and then base malt and flaked barley for body. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not as uh, you know acrid or that kind of burnt taste that you get from other dry stouts. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's what what uh, was the yeast strain that you used on this? This is um, Y yeast, London ESB two or something mm. like that. It's like okay. I've never used that yeast either. Right. It's like nineteen sixty four or something. Nineteen sixty eight. What is was the your number. final? What was your final gravity? Did it ferment uh, far down? Well, or? I brewed this two weeks ago in hopes of having it ready for St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day has since gone past, past yeah. and this is our first tasting. Yeah. Um, this is my first tasting of it. Um, so I missed the date, but I rushed it through. Um, the final gravity was uh, 1018, actually. So it's actually riding a little sweeter than it should be, probably. Maybe that's why I'm that tasting it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, which is probably what's making you think chocolate, because it is a little sweeter mm. than it probably should be. I think the BJC by guidelines, the high end is like 1014. So okay. I'm close, but I'm still a full degree play it all way. So. But I think as a procedure to put the dark grains uh, in the mash the, at the end of it, um, is, is one to, to follow, for sure. It's not that this came out uh, totally wrong. It seems yeah. like it's uh, some, certainly something that, if you're brewing a dark beer at home, maybe you want to try that just to see yeah. how it turns out. Maybe you'll have uh, a bitterness or roastiness that's a little smoother than what you're normally getting if you're putting all those dark grains in the mash for the whole yeah. time you're mashing. So Definitely a fun experiment, Give a fun a way to brew stout. So. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. So I think that's how we'll end this. <laughs> Great. A dry stout using uh, a top mashing procedure. Yeah. And uh, came out to be... I would definitely do good. it exactly this way next time. All right.
Cheers from John and Mike at BrewDashDudes.com. Brew on. Brew on.